Hi, this is Bobby Kelly with All Fill Check Wires, and today I wanted to highlight our low-cost entry-level check wire, the model EW8. It does have a lot of similar features as our other check wires that you've seen. However, there are some key differences, and today I want to take you through those and also how to set up the check wire from start to finish. So the EW8 comes standard with either an 8x18 in-feed conveyor or an 8x18 weigh table. They're interchangeable. This particular model has an 8x18 in-feed conveyor, an 8x12 weigh table, and an 8x12 outfeed. So for products ranging eight to nine inches long, we'll use an 8x12 weigh table, and anything over that, we'll swap them and make an 8x18 weigh table. EW8 also comes standard with a low profile control box here, a seven inch color touchscreen HMI, and the controls are all inside uh, this control box here with our own uh, micro embedded processor. So to set up a recipe, we'll go into the select menu here. And as you can see, you have up to 25 different programmable recipes that come standard on the EW8. Now you can toggle back and forth between recipe numbers, or you can jump up to a recipe if you want to do it quickly. So I could just jump up to recipe number 20 there if I wanted to. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll set up recipe number one. So this is the first product that we're entering. And what we'll do here is we'll go into quick setup. This is where you enter the six important pieces of information to allow the check wearer to be able to calibrate properly. So I went in ahead of time and named this product coffee because we're running a coffee can. I also got a measurement on the can ahead of time. I know the diameter is six inches. Now it's important to get the length of the product before you run it because the check wearer needs to calculate when it's on this 12 inch weight table, how many times it can weigh it and spew out an average on a bell curve. So you could see uh, that when we do our calibration here, the check wear is going to be able to weigh a product depending on the speed that it's out, anywhere between 10 to 100 times, more or less. Uh, so we have our length. You can also weigh in gross or net weight. You can toggle back and forth between the two. Most customers weigh in gross weight because they're going to weigh the entire product, both the container and the uh, elements inside of the container. But some customers choose to weigh in net weight where they can enter their own tear weight so let's say the can itself weighed 200 grams, you could tear that out and just know the weights that's inside. But today we're gonna weigh in gross weight. For each individual check wear, we spec out the motors to meet your speed needs. This particular unit is running a, a little bit on the faster side, so the range is between 73 and 183 feet per minute. Um, and again, that's all designed to fit your needs and it's three variable speed conveyors. So we'll leave the speed at 73, and I did weigh this ahead of time, and I know it weighs 1,088 grams. So after you enter all this information, you're gonna go into auto dynamic calibration. And this is where you can set your high and low limits. You can tell the check where I want anything above this number rejected or anything below this number rejected. And by doing that, you're gonna make sure that you don't give away too much product or not give enough product to the customer. So again, we have our target weight at 1088. Uh, you can manually enter your high low limits or the check wear can do a calculation based on a percentage. So for example, if I didn't want to let anything out the door 1% more or 1% less than my target weight, I can enter that value, press the button here and it will automatically calculate that range. So after we do that, the last step is to press start auto dynamic calibration. You're gonna get your summary screen here of the information that we entered and you're gonna have to run the product anywhere from five to 10 times in order for the check wear to learn that product and it can spew out the most accurate results. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna press start and right now it's starting, it's doing an auto tear feature, tearing out the scale, making sure that's nothing on the conveyors and now it says waiting for containers so we're ready to go. So I'm gonna run my five passes now and as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, from the time that it hit the in-feed photo eye to the out-feed photo eye, the check wear was actually able to, to read and weigh this product 46 times. So I have four more samples to run here. And as you can see, it's running very accurate. We're getting variants of only about a half gram to a gram. So I have my last pass to run here. And after I run this pass, we're gonna see our results. So there you have it. Our standard deviation was 0.21, which means our accuracy on this particular run at 73 feet per minute for a coffee can weighing about two and a half pounds was 0.21. Now we quote everything at two sigma, 
So if you double that, you're still at plus or minus less than a half a gram, which is very accurate. Um, the last step before you're ready to run is you're gonna need to calibrate your reject device. Now on this particular unit, we have an air blast hooked up, which we wouldn't use for the coffee can. We would use a pusher reject. But I just wanna at least show you the values to know how you would set it up. So the check wear does have an, a formula which auto calculates uh, the reject timing, which should get you fairly close, but you can make fine tune adjustments in this screen. So the reject delay is the time from when the product hits the in-feed photo eye to the center of the reject. And the width is gonna be how long in this case, the air blast would blow for before it turned off or how far the pusher would retract before it comes back. And you can change all that information here in the setup reject screen. But after you do that, you go into the main menu, you press start and you're ready to run recipe number one. And now that we've set up recipe number one, that's gonna be locked in as recipe number one and saved unless we go in and overwrite it. So once you do this initial setup process for each individual product, it's something that you're not gonna have to do again. So if we were to go ahead and set up another product, say recipe number two, and we just wanted to get back to running this product, all we would do is go into select, go to recipe number one, press start, and we're ready to run. As you can see, we got a, we got a green weight, 1089, it was within our spec, so it's a, it's a good weight. So I showed you what the select menu feature does and how to set up a recipe. So there are different, uh, four different sub-menus that we still have to cover. Now if you jump into the setup menu here, you can on the fly change the information that we entered, different calculations that the check wearer makes, and the speed and the timing of the reject. Now what I always tell customers is, if you're setting up, if you're going to be changing parameters on the fly, unless you're making minute changes, if you're making anything drastic, you always want to go back into the select menu and do a recalibration. For example, if we were running a, a coffee can that was the same diameter as this but weighed four pounds, we wouldn't just want to go into the setup packaging data here and change the weight to six pounds. We would need to go into the select menu and do another calibration. I'll go back into the main screen here and there's also a calibration menu. Now we statically and dynamically calibrate the scale before we ship it to the customer. However, uh, if you're ever running into some troubleshooting issues where the weights are inaccurate, this is where you can get a known weight, place it on the scale, and statically calibrate the check wear. Additionally, this feature is useful when you have to have a third party company come from the outside and certify your check wear and provide it with a sticker. So this is password protected, but it is a simple four step process. I'll go in here and enter the password and I'll go into static scale calibration. And like I said, it's a simple four step process that will read you the instructions on the screen. It takes about 30 seconds or so. So if I go back and go into the main menu, one of the last screens that we're gonna cover is our test menu. Now this is where you can run some additional troubleshooting uh, features here. You can test your reject and make sure it's firing by hitting that button. You also have a live scale here. So if I put the coffee can on, you can see it reads a weight. A lot of times in a dusty environment, the check wearer might not get readings if the photo eyes are blocked or covered by dust. So if I wave my hand in front of the in-feed sensor, you can see that the button lights up green. Same goes with the out-feed sensor. I can also turn the conveyors on, test the speed, and if I had a tachometer, I can make sure that it's reading 73 feet per minute as advertised on the check wear. Now the last sub-menu here I wanna cover is our statistics menu here. This is just one simple screen that's gonna give you your uh, batch data, except over and unders, your min weight, max weight, average weight, and standard deviation. So this is the thing that probably varies the most from our other check wearers is that the statistics screens, there isn't eight different submenus of all these different numbers that you can see. However, available on the EW8 is our data to USB package where you can plug in a USB stick to an output that we provide, plug it into a PC and get data from that day's run, that shift's run, that week's run. The check wearer will store about 14 days worth of data before it overwrites itself. So that is a feature that's available on the EW. So that'll wrap up our overview of our EW8 model check wire. If you have any questions or require more information, 
You can reach me at bobbyk at allfield.com or call our main number at 610-524-7350.